So listen, in my Wicker Bomb All Boss speedrun, I tried to show off all of Wicker Bomb's books, but I couldn't really because most of them weren't very useful for killing bosses. But most of her books, if not all of them, are pretty useful, especially for making farms for food and for um, like resources like twigs and grass. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of Wicker Bottom's farms that I think are useful. I'm going to show you how to set them up, what they're best used for, etc. And I reckon one or two of these farms you wouldn't have heard of before. Maybe all of them will be new to you. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. A note about all of Wicker Bottom's farms and her books is that all of them drain sanity. And if you're insane when you read the books, uh, it spawns a shadow creature. Meaning, if you're doing lots of uh, reading, you're going to be dealing with a whole lot of shadow creatures uh, by the time you're done with your farm. So I'm going to share with you three methods to um, deal with the shadow creatures. So the first one is just building your farm on Lunar Island. Uh, very simple. They don't spawn on Lunar Island, so you don't have to deal with them. Number two is using the Bone Helmet from Ancient View Weaver. The Bone Helmet makes shadow creatures neutral to you, so while you're reading your books, you can just um, wear the Bone Helmet and then take it back off and put some armor on and eat some sanity food after you're done. That way, the shadow creatures will start attacking you, but they'll start despawning and de because you're not insane anymore. You might take a, a couple of hits though, so it's not completely sick. And lastly is you can just bring enough sanity food to stop yourself from going insane ever. Which I would use for farms that you only have to read a book a couple of times or like up to four or five times. Now, on with the farms. So let's get started firstly with one of the probably most powerful meat farm that Wickerbottom can achieve. Wickerbottom's fish meat farm. Me and the chat figured this one farm out, so here goes. It does require you to go to the monkey island first because you need the cannon, the cannonball, and the dock blueprints. Of course, you'll need the book that spawns fish. You'll need a bookshelf, eight dock tiles, at least two cannonballs every time you want to run the farm. So as you can see, how you build the farm is with three dock tiles extending out from the shore and then going around making a C shape. This leaves two tiles of water inside the dock where we're going to spawn the fish. But before we do that, we have to put another dock tile that extends out opposite of the shore from the back of the C shape. And on that little extension, we're going to put a cannon right in the center. Now opposite of those two ocean tiles, we're going to put two carpet tiles and we're going to put the bookshelf centered between those two carpet tiles. So now the method, stand on the side of the bookshelf that's furthest away from the shore, equip the bone helmet if you're going to use it, and begin reading your books. Read each book twice and then a third time once they recharge from the bookcase. Now I wouldn't recommend reading more than 12 books because then your world will start lagging and it'll be pretty unbearable. Now you are standing in a specific point when you're reading these books. That's because if you stand too close or too far away, either the fish will spawn outside of your little enclosed area area or they won't spawn at all because you're too far away from the water. So standing here and reading the books will make it so the fish always spawn inside your little enclosed area, that one by two ocean tile spot. So anyway, once you've read all your books and they're all down to one or two or three percent, eat sanity food and take the bone hammer off and then wait until all of the shadow creatures disappear. And it's also important to say you can't just run away from the shadow creatures because if you unload the area with the fish, the fish will simply despawn. So once all the creatures have de you and or have despawned, and it's time to kill the fishies. Now, instead of using a cannon here, you can use a strident trident, as then you just go kaboom. Oh no, some of the fish got away. What the hell? <sighs> Okay, so obviously, if you were gonna do that, you would you would build the dock a little bit wider so the fish wouldn't go flying out into the sea. There you go, that's how you do it! So you're gonna need two cannonballs for this. The first cannonball will get rid of like 99% of the fish, but then there'll be three or four fish left over who will start eating the meat that you get from the dead fish. So as soon as you load and fire the first cannonball, you're gonna want to load and fire the second cannonball immediately after to make sure those other fish die so they don't eat all of the meat. And that's that's it! Pick up all of your fish, bundle it up, and you're good to go. Fish meat is relatively hard to get hold of in Don't Starve, so this meat fish meat farm is like insane. Nothing comes close to it. A couple of notes about this farm is that each cast of the book can spawn up to three shoals, but since we're spawning them in such a tight space, you only get one shoal, but that's fine. You still get an insane amount of fish. So using 12 books, so casting this 36 times will result in roughly 30 big fish, 40 popcorn, and 200 fish morsels. Also, if you do this during spring, some of the fish morsels will actually be replaced with 30 leafy meat since different types of fish spawn that drop leafy meat. So also a leafy meat farm. This farm isn't only just good for food. You can let the fish meat rot, then hammer the rotten fish corpses to get potentially some bone shards, or you can just give the meat to Pig King, or you could feed the meat to a bird to get lots of eggs. So this farm is very good. So, um, would recommend. 
Next is a kind of Krampus farm, but it also is a feather farm and a morsel farm. So for this farm, you're gonna need 15 anemones, some fences, two gates, and then either fossil fragments or some statues from a potter's wheel. You only need the fossil fragments slash statues if you're gonna be doing the second method that I'll be mentioning after the first one. So this farm is eight by eight tiles. There's a bookcase placed directly in the center with birds of the world and sleepy time stories inside of the bookcase. You want three birds of the world for every two sleepy stories you have. And the anemones that you could see placed around are placed around very precisely because they stop birds from spawning all around you and it forces them to spawn all in one spot so it's easier to kill them. And you can also change the turf to whatever you want depending on what bird you want. So grass turf gives you red birds in every season except winter and when it's winter you get snowbirds. And then if you have a turf that isn't grass you'll get crows or canaries. Uh, you only get canaries if there's a scarecrow nearby though. It's also worth noting red birds and canaries give the same amount of naughtiness if you're trying to spawn in as much crampi as possible. So how do you operate this farm? Well, you want to place an item like twigs where you want the crampi to gather outside the fence so maybe one twig in each corner of the farm. Make sure the gates are shut, read Birds of the World book once, and then read Sleepy Time Stories book once. After you've done that, have a weapon like a hand bat that can one hit birds, and just hold Control F, kill all of the birds. And then rinse and repeat until you have enough morsels or feathers for your uh, satisfaction. During all of this, you'll be getting lots of naughtiness points, so the Krampus will be getting very angry, and so they'll be spawning around you, and they won't spawn inside the farm, they'll spawn outside the farm, see the twigs on the inside of the farm, then hopefully run against the fence and get stuck there. So again, once you're done, you've used up all your books or you have enough morsels and feathers, pick up all your morsels and feathers, bundle up the uh, morsels so they don't spoil, collect the feathers, then you can begin kiting the Krampi over the fence so it's a lot easier to kite them, and hopefully you'll get yourself a Krampus sack, which is just a backpack that has lots of inventory spaces. Now, method two. So you get a whole lot more feathers and morsels, but you don't get any Krampi. So let me explain. So first, you're gonna need to bring either Glomma or a Houndia Shootius to the farm, and you're gonna have to change the farm to look something like this. So you're gonna place two or three twigs behind the fossils or statues to bait the Krampi, and you're gonna be using Winona catapults. So Wicked Bottom and Winona are coming together to make this farm. So once you fuel the catapults and your Houndia Shootius or Glomma is in the right spot, you can attack the Houndia Shootius or Glomma, and the catapults will start firing at Glomma or the Houndia Shootius. So even though the catapult is attacking, it doesn't actually damage Glomma or the Houndia Shootius because they're friendly, they're like friendly mobs, so it doesn't damage them. But it has air area of effect damage, so if there happened to be a bunch of birds on the floor, the catapult would kill them all. So once your catapults are firing at Glomar or the Houndia Shootius, you want to read your Birds of the World book right before the catapult animation starts. This will time it so the birds will land as the uh, projectile hits the floor, so it'll kill all the birds, but it's also worth knowing, if you do it too early and one of the birds land, and then that bird dies, the rest of the birds will fly off, so you need to kill them all at once. And because it's not you killing the birds, you don't get any Krampus, but you do kill the birds way faster. You can kind of mix these methods together as well. Well, so you can use Birds of the World and Sleepy Time Stories and manually kill all the birds to spawn a Krampi. And then once you've got like a hundred Krampi stuck behind the fossils, you turn on your catapult and you let your catapults kill the Krampi, which is going to be a whole lot faster than you killing them individually. So yeah, you can kind of mix and match as well. Next we got kind of a simple one. So this is the infinite vegetable farm where you can sustainably grow vegetables with wicker bottom no matter what season it is and no matter what vegetable you want to farm. All you need is four seeds of the same type. Without delving too much into farming, you need to make the plants happy to get seeds back along with the vegetable that you grow. With wicker bottom's book Horticulture Expanded, it gives the plant enough happiness so that the only thing you have to do is make sure they get the family bonus, which means four or more of the same type of plant. As long as that is true, you can read the book, you'll always get at least one seed back. Even if the vegetable is out of season. Meaning, maybe you want some dragon fruit in autumn when it's not in season. Well, don't worry about it. As long as you plant four or more of them and there's no weeds nearby, all of them will give you one dragon fruit and one dragon fruit seed. Gosh, dry, I forgot to take my headphones off. Oh, well. And so if you only have four dragon fruit seeds, you can grow the dragon fruits, get four seeds and four fruits back, and then feed the fruits to a bird to, so now that you have eight seeds. And then you can just keep doing this until you have 36 seeds. That way you can grow 36 dragon fruit at a time. A quick note is as long as you have like 60 or 70 or 80 wild seeds planted in autumn, you'll probably get at least one of every vegetable. So then you can go from there to grow more and more. So very good vegetable farm, I recommend. <laughs> Next, we've got a classic, but also super powerful. 
It's a twig slash grass lure plant farm. I say twig slash grass because they're exactly the same except you can swap out the twigs for the grass or mix and match and have both in the same farm. This design can hold up to 171 plants, meaning 171 grass tufts or saplings. Now in this farm, you'll have it set up like you can see on screen. In fact, all of the lure plant farms that I'm going to show you in this video are set up exactly the same as this one. You'll have a layer of plants, then another tile out from that, you have another layer of plants, and another tile out from that, you have another layer of plants. The placement of these plants are specific but also straightforward to follow, since it just follows the line of the tile starting on the corner of a tile. So once the lure plants have sprouted eyeballs, all you have to do is read Wickerbottom's Silver Culture book 8 to 12 times with 2 lure plants. With 171 plants and 12 reads with 2 lure plants, you'll probably get very close to filling up both of the lure plants, which have 15 inventory slots, so 15 stacks of grass or twigs. Which means if you have 2 lure plants, you can be getting 1200 grass or twigs uh, each time you do the farm. Then once you finish reading your books, make sure you take your bone hammer off and you're not insane anymore, and begin killing the lure plants. Sometimes there are eyeballs really close by, so what I like to do is do a few hits on one lure plant and the other one, and then kill them both really fast back to back so the eye plants don't have time to eat any of the other lure plants loot. So that is a classic farm, but also very powerful. 10 out of 10. Now this ne next farm is similar to the last one, except it has a few additional requirements. This is the Monkey Tail Reader Lure Plant Farm. So the reason why this has extra requirements is because you have to get a lot of these monkey tails to plant into this uh, kind of farm. So the way to get a lot of these monkey tails, we'll be getting 53 of them, is you have to find Monkey Island, and then you have to farm for these monkey monkey tails. Now, the way to farm for these fast, you need to feed one moon gleam into the portal at the Monkey Island. Each time you feed a moon gleam into Monkey Island, it will give you one of every Monkey Island resource, like banana bushes, the pine trees, also the monkey tails. So what you're going to do is have a stack of twigs in your first inventory slot so that if a monkey tries to steal from you, it'll just steal some twigs. You're also going to bring a few bananas. Once you arrive just outside of the tiled area around the pool, you're going to build a small fenced area where, with a gate where you're going to put a banana. That way, when a monkey comes out of the portal, it'll go for the banana rather than taking the stuff that you want to keep. Also, it will keep all the monkeys from attacking you slash stealing from you. Since this requires moon gleams, which you have to pick up from the lunar storms, this makes it quite a late game farm because, you know, you have to basically unlock Celestial Champion. Once you've fed all the moon gleams to the portal, pick up all the resources and leave. Eventually, the banana will rot, meaning there'll be a bunch of wild monkeys running around the island, so the island will be pretty dangerous if you ever go back. After that, you just have to plant them in the same orientation as the grass and uh, twig lure plant farm, and it's exactly the same. Read your books in until the reeds need fertilizing again, kill the lure plant, and then fertilize the reeds, and then you can do it all again. Very good farm for Wickerbottom since she does need reeds for all of her books. And good, especially if you don't have a tentacle trap in your world. And for the last lure plant farm, we have a rock fruit lure plant farm. This is slightly different because you can't fit quite as many bushes in uh, this farm as the rest of them. This farm can hold up to 87 rock fruit bushes. Now, Lunar Islands usually starts with between 30 and 40 rock fruit bushes. I went and tested it, and I got 30 one I think. But as you farm rock fruits, you'll get more rock fruit saplings which you can plant to add to your farm. And of course, you can just use the farm with less rock fruit bushes, you just get less value for each read of your book. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as the other little plant farms. Very good. Lots of rocks and vegetables from the avocado fruits. Enough of these lure plant farms. Sometimes you just want a cute, a cute little farm plot without any lure plants. So that's what I have here. Here we have four two by one tiles, each housing 15 of each different plant. Being berry bushes, stone fruits, juicy berry bushes, and banana bushes. In this farm, you can grab either horticulture abridged or the expanded version and stand next to the central point of the section that you want to grow and then read the book to grow all of the plants surrounding you. Or you could just read the book four times standing anywhere to grow everything. If you're going to harvest the berry bushes, make sure you pick one berry and drop it in the center to distract all the gobblers so they don't eat all your berries. Also, here's the math regarding which book to use. You can use horticulture abridged or horticulture expanded, so use whichever you want. So the next one is kind of a farm, but more so just like a tip if you're playing Wicker Bomb. Full moon farm. So what does a full moon farm mean? It means going down into the caves as soon as possible and trying to find the archives behind the blue mushroom forest. Once you find the archives, you're going to go find the pedestals with the iridescent gems. You're going to take two of those iridescent gems and then while you're down there you may as well kill some gnomes for some living logs then you got to find lunar island to chop down some lunar trees at which point you'll want to kill the butterflies that the trees drop and then 
then you have all the ingredients to make the full moon book. In fact, you have enough ingredients to make two of them. Once you have two full moon books in your bookshelf recharging all the time, you can always have a full moon every night. So from your first autumn, you can just have a full moon every night, so you don't have to worry about light. You can farm Glomma for Krampus sex. You can farm were pigs. And like I said, all of this can be achieved easily in the first half of your autumn. I did a test run where I did it in the first few days. So speaking of the caves, this farm is very rewarding and also very dangerous, but also lots of fun to do. It's a Splamonkey tentacle farm. So as it sounds, we're going to be making a tentacle trap and then leading a bunch of Splamonkeys into it and getting all of the bananas, the morsels, the beard hair and the nightmare fuel. So what you'll need are rocks for statues, materials for walls and tentacle books for tentacles. So firstly, we set up a tentacle trap a small distance away from a large population of monkey dens. You will always get a number of monkey dens close to the entrance of the ruins. So we're going to make the tentacle trap one or two screens away from the entrance of the ruins. Now the tentacle trap itself, you can design it however you like. I went with this design, which is pretty simple and works just fine. So I'll be running through this tunnel bit and then leading the monkeys into the tentacles. Now the monkeys will walk around the walls, but they won't walk around the statues or fossils, whichever you put down. I also put down hay walls on the floor and knocked them down. This way, when I read my tentacle books to spawn tentacles, they won't spawn where the walls are. So, and obviously I want a safe area without any tentacles. So start reading your books and spawn tentacles in the danger zone, and then you're ready to go. So this is the dangerous part. You're gonna want some armor in case you get hit, potentially a full sight crown, maybe a speed bonus item like a Magiluminescence or a walking cane. You're gonna run around all the monkey dens during the nightmare phase until all the monkeys are chasing you. Then you're gonna run straight back to your tentacle trap, run them into the tentacles, and you're gonna turn the corner to get them stuck on the statues as soon as possible. Doing this, the tentacles will start going ham and killing all of the monkeys. And then you just have to wait for them all to die. It's gonna be pretty hard to pick up all these items. So I'd recommend you just using the lazy forager. They changed it so you can refuel it with nightmare fuel now. And so just run back and forth over the tentacle trap until you pick up all of the items with the lazy forager. The catapult variation with Winona's catapults is a whole lot less dangerous. You have to put a box of statues around your catapults and then the catapults don't attack you, they only attack the monkeys. Or the best way probably to farm some monkeys is using Wendy and Abigail and just give Abigail the shield potion and a healing potion. So all you gotta do is make Abigail angry and run around attacking all the shadow monkeys and Abigail's shield will protect her from most of the damage and if her health gets too low, you just feed her a healing potion. She'll be able to kill an entire horde of shadow monkeys, no problem. You know when you use bear just to knock down trees, you know, for, um, for... Rather than waiting for the trees to grow, you could just use Wicker Bottom to force them to grow to their last stage. This way you can farm like lots of batches of trees rather than just one or two if you wait for them to grow naturally. All you gotta do is wait for them to grow from saplings to the first stage, then you can read your book and force them to the last stage. Better than waiting. So the first time I saw this concept was in a James Bucket video, but now that concept is now reality, baby. Since a couple of updates ago, they added some magnets so that you can have one magnet on your boat and another magnet on another boat. You can turn those magnets on and off, therefore, the second boat doesn't need anyone on them and it will still follow the first boat. So how can we, how can we use this? Well, we can place walls down on the floor of our boat and no walls on the floor of the other boat, then put down a magnet on that boat and then start reading our tentacle book. This way it will get tentacles to spawn on the other boat and the boat will follow you if you turn the magnet on. But what can you actually do with this boat? Well, you could just, I mean, you could just drag it over to, I don't know, Malbatross? I'm gonna record this because it's funny. Hello. All right, so now we simply um, give ice cream. Yeah, it makes it a little faster, I guess. I think I think that's probably as best as we can do. Activate the magnet. Come my tentacle boat, let us go find Malbatross. It's a tentacle boat for, we're just kind of, it's just for fun. Oh my goodness, Malbatross spawned. No way, that's crazy. Oh, goodbye Malbatross. Oh no, it knocks the boat away. Wait, turn on the magnet. Yes, pull it back to- wait, we need to pull it back towards Malbatross. Yes. Look, we're geniuses. We turn on the magnet, and then- alright, now we turn it off. We need to- wait, where'd he go? Alright, this is what we're gonna do. We gotta turn on the magnet and drag it under Malbatross. Oh, it was that close to death. It works! But also be warned, if that boat the tentacles are on ever breaks, all the tentacles will just detonate. They'll all just die immediately because they just get effectively get drowned. 
And that's it. That's all the farms I had written down for this video. If I missed any farms or you think you got some improvements, just put them down in the comments and let everyone else know. Also, uh, comment which character you want to see do a boss run next. Or any other video ideas for that matter. Like the video if you liked it, uh, share it with your friends who also play Wickerbottom. And thank you for watching, friends. I will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not gold. Do it! I tipped over my water! <laughs> my one litre water bottle just got flooded all over my floor. Wow, very cool. Mm. Wish it would just flood my lungs.